I'll tell you what, this is exciting to be here. How are you doing this, this morning? You can have a seat, but uh, what a, an awesome opportunity to be with this great church. I'll tell you what, already just walking in the door, falling in love with this church, and uh, you can tell you've got great pastors, but not just great pastors, a great uh, team around, around the pastor and just a great congregation. It's, it's palpable. You can walk in the door, like I said, you sense the presence of God and you sense the love of God. And also what I sense is, is purpose. I sense destiny. I sense that there's, God has a plan. He has a purpose for this congregation right here in Arkansas. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. And uh, we're just so excited to be able to get hooked up and to be connected like that. Because just like Pastor Nate said, I'll tell you what, God works through connections. And I'm glad to be connected with Jesus, the head of the church. And I'm so glad to be connected with the other parts of the body. And so uh, this morning, um, and, and I think we, I've got a PowerPoint that I'm going to share some pictures with you. I pulled some pictures just off my iPhone, and I'm going to share some things. There's so many things I, I would love to share, and Pastor Nate started to touch on some of them. But um, there's a purpose behind everything we want to share. We don't want to just share to share. We want to find what the heart of God is. We want to hear the oracle of God. We want to hear from the head of the church this morning. We want to believe that he's going to give us a direction. He's going to give us revelation. And he's going to help propel us uh, even deeper into his plans and purposes for our life. Amen. So everything we do, everything we share, we want that to be really uh, our, our heartbeat and our, and our purpose. And so uh, as Pastor Dave mentioned, uh, Nations 180. Is the name of the ministry that the Lord uh, gave us to, uh, uh, to really found and start. And uh, the reason for the nation's 180 is we believe God wants us to help nations do a 180. We want to see them turn around. We want to see them changed. And so that's what we're all about. And so I do want to greet you just quickly for my wife. I spoke to her this, uh, this morning. We've been married for 34 years. We've got a picture here of our family. And uh, we met when we were 17. As a matter of fact, we graduated from high school in May, got married in June, moved to Oklahoma in July, started Bible school in September. We really haven't slowed down since. Uh, we've got five kids. And in the next picture you'll see, uh, that's our grandbaby. So I'm a grandpa. And it is the most awesome thing in the world uh, to be a grandpa. And so that's our, our granddaughter, Riley Jane. She just turned two uh, in October. And so, um, but I just want to share with you a little bit, if we go to the next slide here. Uh, Luke 24, 47 says, in his name, uh, repentance. You know, repentance is talking about that turning around. It's that 180. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed to all nations. Can we say it together, all nations? You know, that word nations, we're not talking about geographical borders. Uh, we're talking about ethnic groups, really. It's the word ethnos. And the heartbeat of God is to one day in heaven have people from every tribe, every language, every kindred, every family. That's, that's the purpose of God. That's why uh, he's left us here on the earth, so that we can go and make disciples of all nations. And that's really our, our purpose. It's our It's our passion. And uh, the mission or the vision statement that we have is, is really simple, and that's to facilitate church planning movements, establish ministry training centers, and provide uh, faith-building publications and media for the nations of the French-speaking world. And so, like Pastor Nate said, a lot of people think about Paris, they think about France when you, when you hear French-speaking, but I've got a map here that shows you everything that's there in uh, beige is, is a French-speaking nation. A huge part of the world is French-speaking. And so, you know, I can just go through a couple pictures real quick. Like I said, I grabbed a few off of my iPhone, and we see the Eiffel Tower, and that's the iconic, oh, yeah, France, French-speaking, we think about that. But the next picture is in the street uh, of Haiti, uh, and these people speak Creole, but they also speak French. The next picture is uh, the city of Montreal. Montreal is the second uh, largest French-speaking a uh, native French-speaking city in the world, and uh, we live one hour from this place. I'll tell a little bit of the story a little later on, but supernaturally, the Spirit of God in 1989 uh, gave us a mandate to go to Quebec and establish a base from which we could reach the other nations of the French-speaking world. Six-tenths of 1% born-again believers in, out of 7 million people in Quebec. It's an amazing uh, opportunity uh, for the mission field. Next picture is a gas station in Benin, West Africa. If you want to buy gas, you can buy it out of these little glass bottles. And uh, 
So I'm, I'm just trying to show you there's such, you know, a vast difference. You know, we say French, and, and, and again, I'm trying to get people to think beyond Paris, beyond the Eiffel Tower. We, we also have the city of Geneva in that picture there. It's a beautiful, one of the wealthiest cities in the world. And again, contrast that with this man uh, uh, bringing his cows up the hill in uh, a, a much more rural setting that's also French-speaking. So God gave us that mandate to... Uh, help reach the French-speaking world, but that's way, way bigger than us. It takes a lot of people, a lot of dots to be connected, amen? And so uh, we've had the privilege of working together with with others, and we have a a team of uh, French-speaking folks that we work with on a regular basis. I I lead a task force. We meet every week, people from uh, all over the French-speaking world, and and our goal, our desire is to be able to reach every nation of the French-speaking world. And part of that plan uh, centers around the establishing of, of Rhema Bible Training College campuses. Already, you can see, we've been able to start campuses in Drummondville, Quebec, Montreal, Quebec, Quebec City, Quebec, uh, Carrefour, Haiti, Nice, France, Paris, France, Geneva, Switzerland, and uh, Oron la ville en Suisse also. So those are the campuses that our team has been able to launch to date, and it's been really exciting. You can see, especially in Haiti, uh, you can see the picture here of Rayma Haiti. Right now we have 349 students, and uh, they are on fire for God. It's, it's amazing what God's doing. But I just want to ask you to pray for Haiti because things are not well in the natural there. Uh, this is the first time since 2012 we had to actually cancel school for the last 10 weeks. No school of any form or fashion has been operable in the nation. Uh, most all businesses have been closed. Banks are intermittently open. People are having a hard time getting food because of all of the civil unrest that's taking place there. Lots of violence, lots of things that are taking place. But we believe that the name of Jesus is above every name. And our students and our graduates are being able to make a difference. You can see 2015, that's our first graduating class at Rayma Haiti. Uh, And and then 2018, we have our second graduating class. And these people are out planting churches and and doing all kinds of ministry. You can see um, the the inside of the services at our Rayma graduation uh, in 2018. We had about 2,500 people that that showed up for that event. And... uh, We've got a guy just, you can see the joy in their face. But I want to show you this police officer. He's one of our graduates. And uh, we're talking about changing nations. And while he was at school at Ramah, he also uh, planted a church. So uh, he's a pastor and he's a police officer in the National Police. Uh, But he's not just a police officer. He's actually the chief of police of Pétionville, which is the presidential zone. So he's third in command of all of the National Police of Haiti. And so he's two promotions away of being the number one guy. Pray for him, though. He's already got shot twice this year, okay? Once in the hand, one in the arm. So he's got a really tough job. But uh, I'll tell you what, he's also started an association des policiers chrétiens d'Haïti, the uh, Christian Police Association of Haiti. And they have hundreds of born-again officers all through the country right now that are, uh, and they're, one of their goals is to preach the gospel in uniform so that the, the young gang members can see that you, can, you don't have to be a gang member to have power, amen? And so that's pretty exciting. Um, and again, I'm just kind of quickly just giving you a little bit of an overview. We've been at this a long time, so we're, uh, to try to condense everything into a little uh, a moment is, is a challenge, but you know, what, what Pastor Nate shared is so, so true, and that is that the French language is, is huge. And what a lot of people have never realized, the next picture is going to show you the map of Africa. Everything on this map that's in dark, that that's a French-speaking African nation. And so a huge part of our mandate, and we've carried this in our heart for over 30 years, we've been praying for French-speaking Africa and never really had the, the, the green light to go until 2012. In 2012, we made our first trip to Benin, West Africa. And it's very interesting because we'd been having phone calls from African pastors for years and years to the point where my kids would say, in the middle of the night because of time change, 2 o'clock in the morning, the phone's ringing, Dad, Africa's calling again. And we never, could, we never had the peace to go until 2012 we were invited to go. There was a Danish uh, evangelist who was going to do a crusade, and they needed someone to do the uh, teaching of the pastors, pastors' conferences during the day. And so uh, uh, we were invited to go, me and my, my friend John uh, Madden, and, and because we spoke French, we were going to do those uh, sessions. So we said yes. That was scheduled for November the 18th. On November the 1st, 2012, we launched Rama Haiti. 
And while we were there in front of all these hundreds of students, the Spirit of God came on me, and I began to prophesy. And I don't very frequently prophesy. I'm more of a teacher and, and, and than anything else. You know, I've pastored for 22 years in, in Quebec. And so, but the, the Spirit of prophecy was there, and I began to prophesy. And I said, get ready, because God is going to raise up an army of Haitians, not only to transform your nation, but many of you will be going into other nations of the French-speaking world, especially into French-speaking Africa. And I heard myself saying that, and it was just really a powerful moment. Fast forward 18 days, and I'm in West Africa in the back seat of a car with a young 20-something guy, and he's uh, and I talked to him about where we were. I said, "Hey, we just got back from Haiti." He goes, "Haiti? Did you know that our two nations are very closely related?" I said, "No, I had no idea." He goes, "Yeah, we're basically the same family. Almost all of the Haitians uh, were sold into slavery, and and they were put on the slave ships right here in Benin and shipped off to Benin. That's why they have voodoo because voodoo is uh, the birthplace of voodoo is Benin, and we exported the voodoo to to Haiti." Uh, and uh, I said, I had no clue. And so I opened up my iPad, and I showed them the picture of the 320 students that were there at that time. And I said, well, look, here are our students. We just started a Bible school. And, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came on this young man, and he started to prophesy. And he said, regarde, regarde, c'est eux qui nous ont dévancés, mais c'est eux qui vont venir nous enseigner la parole de Dieu. He goes, look at them, look at them. He goes, they are ahead of us today, but they are the ones who shall come here and teach us the word of God, which is exactly what he had said on November the 1st. And so what's totally exciting about that is just last month, uh, on October the 4th, we were able to go with uh, two of our graduates from that class that were in that picture and who are now the administrators of Rama Haiti. They went with us. Uh, he pastors, he and his wife pastor a church of about 1,000 there in, in the Port-au-Prince area. And they went with us to meet with uh, some of the denominational leaders in Benin to discuss having a Rama uh, school in their nation. And it was so exciting because there was an instant connection and uh, one of these denominational leaders, an, an older man who has thousands of churches under him, they, these guys represent 8,000 local churches. And he said, and he, t and he looks at Andy, and Andy's only uh, in his 30s, and he goes, well, you are going to come back and teach your ancestors the word of God. And so again and again, we see that God has a plan. Isn't it exciting to know that God has a plan? Yeah. And so French-speaking Africa is a huge part of what, what God's called us to do. Uh, you can see on this map here that uh, that red section, that's the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, 90 million people. It's the largest French-speaking country in the world. We were just there in July. And just to give you a little idea, we've got a quick little video. shows the streets of Kinshasa. You can see it's a, the largest French-speaking city in the world. I don't know if that'll start or not. Uh, does the video play? No, it doesn't play. That's okay. So you... Um, I've got two videos. One was on, in the, the nice part of town, and this is the not-so-nice part of town, and it's better than Disney World. I'll tell you what. You want to go on a wild ride, just go for a drive through the streets here. I wish you could see the video. It's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, just so you know, th th this, is, this is the Congo, largest French-speaking country in the world. We were just there, and you can see uh, we had a, a conference with... Uh, oh, there we go. They don't slow down very much. You can see the streets aren't exactly the cleanest. People selling their wares. So that's just a typical daily drive down the, the streets of, of Kinshasa. It's kind of like Alma, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, we were there in July, and again, amazing. They had mobilized uh, several denominations working together, mobilized uh, uh, pastors from all over the city. The city has 12 million people. You can see this next picture. Uh, we had about 800 uh, pastors and leaders come together for three days of training, ministerial training, and they're basically begging us to come and to start a rhema there. Uh, and and they, they gave us two venue options. They said, you know, we know we can at least, no problem at all if you want to have 1,000 students, but here's a venue for 500, here's one for 1,000. So they're serious. They want, to, they want us to come, and it's, uh, it's really exciting. So we were also, though, went to the countryside about three hours uh, away from Kinshasa. You can see this is a much more rural setting. I wanted to share this. If you look at the next uh, photo, um, there's another video I want to show you. These people are Christians 
of churches that have been planted in this rural area, and uh, some of them walked over, I think it was 35 miles, walked all night long. Some of them came and dug out canoes, and they came, and we were probably the first white people they ever saw. And uh, I was able to go and, 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 and minister the word. And you know what I did is I asked them to please pray for the people of Quebec because I saw the fire and I saw the devotion. They walk all night long to get to church, you know. And look at the excitement. You can hear this video real quick. This is what they look like after walking all night. For, uh... <laughs> They don't look too worn out, do they? So just, I don't know, there's something about that that just inspires me. You know, when they say that today in the, in the United States, the average Christian goes to church once every six weeks, and these guys walk all night and take the canoes. But what they need is the teaching of the Word of God. They need the ministerial training. They need help uh, in, in church planting. And you can see, hey, they gave us a great offering while we were there also. This is a great offering, bananas and fufu. And I don't know if you can see I'm holding on to something on the next picture. You can see that's a goat. And uh, they served me the liver, and it was really good. <laughs> so uh, next picture is Benin, the, the, the map of Benin. That's where we just were last month. You can see it looks like a key. And, uh, and the next picture on, after that is the group of pastor, uh, pastors who are the denominational leaders who, again, are, are desperately uh, begging us to come and, and start ministry training center. They, need, they say we need help uh, training church planters. We need help uh, getting people grounded in the doctrine of God, and uh, they want that. You can see this great picture here of the colorful uh, garb of the Beninois people. That's a church we ministered in. Um, tons of motorcycles in the street. I wanted to show you this really quickly, this door of no return. This is a monument to the place where the slaves were put on the ships. They were put through horrible, horrific uh, uh, tests of endurance, and those who were strong enough were put on the ships to become slaves. If you weren't strong enough and you died along the way, or even if you weren't dead yet, they would throw you in a, in a mass grave while you were still alive and let you die. It was that bad. And so they put up this monument to, uh, to kind of... Uh, uh, it's a place of pilgrimage for the African people. It's called the door of no return because once you went through this part of the, of the process, you will never coming back. They put you in a dugout canoe, took you to the ship, and you went off to Haiti or some of these other places. Well, we were there. This is Pastor Nazaire. Uh, just a really quick video clip. He was the president of this federation of all of these churches that uh, represent 8,000 congregations. Uh, he just has been stepped down for another president, but he had a message for you. And so we can listen to that really quickly, I think. Bonjour tout le monde. We're here in Ouida, in Benin, and uh, we're at the door of no return. And uh, we've just had yesterday a great meeting with uh, denominational leaders from all over this country, uh, talking about the possibility of opening a Rhema Bible training college here in this nation. We're here with my great friend, Pastor Nazaire, who'd like to, to greet you today. Good day to you all. We are here at the gate of non return in Guida. We, this is a place where many slaves have been escorted from, and also a place, place where the voodoo has been escorted from. And uh, our uh, will and uh, wish is that uh, Bible Training Center, Rema, be established in uh, Benin so that we can export also the gospel and missionaries. I don't know if you understood what he said. So he goes, so we're, much for your and support. He goes this is a, a place where we have exported slavery, we have exported voodoo, but now we want Rainbow to come so we can export the gospel. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. I love that. Yeah. Amen. So, and it's, it's important. The next picture is a, a mosque. Uh, the, the Muslims are, have a, a stated goal of putting a mosque every two kilometers along with a well, a bank, a school, a hospital. So if you convert to Islam, you need nothing else. And, uh, and, and this is what Pastor Nazir there said, we need to plant churches, we need to plant churches. Uh, so far, Benin is a very peaceful country, uh, but it's surrounded by places where Islamic extremists are trying to get in, but we're going we're gonna to push back the darkness with the gospel, amen? So uh, just two other quick video clips, and uh, I wanted you to see this as we were driving along the coast. And what, This is just a couple weeks ago. Um, there's, there's fishing villages where these nets, a single net, are multiple fo football lengths, uh, they're in gigantic nets, 
and they do this just like in the time of Jesus, casting the nets, bringing the fish. But look at this. Uh, you can pl play this video just real quick. These guys all have to pull together from sun up sometimes to sundown. They'll be out there pulling nets. And I saw that. I thought, you know what? The, what God's called us to do is such a big job. But if we'll just pull together, we can get it done. Amen. And then uh, this one last video. Uh, it, this is about 25 guys. You can go ahead and play the video. It takes about 25 guys just to carry the net to the water. The thing is huge. And again, I thought, you know what? The doors are open for us in Africa. There's so much to be done. There, people are begging for us to come. And uh, we just need people to help us carry the nets to get there. Amen? And so that's part of that dot connecting thing we're talking about. And, uh, and so I just want to encourage you to continue to pray for this ministry. Pray for us. Um, you can go to our website if you're interested in, and check things out. Um, it's nations180.com. We've also got some cards out there on the table those who are interested in becoming a partner, we've got a, a way that you can do that. Uh, it's nations180.com. Take the 180 challenge. It's really simple. It's, it's uh, $15 a month, makes $180. So we just need a bunch of people to, to help us get the nets to the water. Amen? And so I'm excited. God's good. And how many of you are excited about living today in this day and age? Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, pa Pastor Nat asked me to share... And we've got about 10 minutes left or so. Is that right? Uh, what, what time is it? I don't have my watch. My watch is, what's that? 10, 15 minutes. I just wanted to share with you just a, couple, a, a scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is one of my life scriptures. Many of you may know it in, in another version that says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should, work, that we should walk in them. But I really like this version here in the Amplified. It says this, For we are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed. How many of you glad to be transformed? Renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. I tell you what, there's no life like the life of God's will and his plan and his purpose. Amen? And so, again, I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. My wife grew up in a little town of 687 people in southeast Missouri. I mean, we never would have dreamed we'd be doing what we're doing today, but God had a plan. And so the question often is asked, well, how do we, what do I need to do to get involved with that plan? How do I find the, the way to that path, and how do I stay on that path? And I just want to give you three really quick thoughts that, to leave with you and three quick verses that we can leave with you. If you want to find that, pl that place that God has prearranged for you, if you want to live that good life, I think there's three things we all need to do. Number one, we need to be filled with the Spirit. Because it's, it's not by might, it's not by power. We can't dream these things up. God has a plan, and he needs to reveal that plan to us supernaturally. Amen? Yes. And so uh, Romans chapter 8, we all know that scripture in verse 26 that says that uh, the Spirit himself helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to praise we ought, but he helps us with groanings too deep for articulate speech. And then, you know, I love that because the, the verse that follows this, this passage which talks about praying in the Spirit it says, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And, and we quote that scripture way, way too often out of context when there's a bad accident happens, somebody dies. Oh, all things work together. No, all things work together when we pray out God's plans. And so we need to pray out in the spirit. Why are we in Quebec today? It's because one day I was vacuuming the carpet in, 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 in St. Louis, Missouri in 1989, praying in the Holy Ghost, singing in tongues, and the spirit of God spoke to me while I was singing in other tongues and said, I want you to begin praying for the people of Quebec, praying for the people of Quebec. And I didn't know anyone there, never been there, had no clue. It was six tenths, one percent, and we began praying. And now my life is, is, has been way, way, way changed because of that prayer, Amen. I've got a, uh, now I have a, uh, not only the ministry that's based there, but I also have a daughter-in-law who's Quebecoise, who doesn't even really speak English, and, and a beautiful granddaughter. I mean, God had a plan, amen? Yeah. So we need to be filled with the Spirit. And so I encourage you to pray out God's plan for you, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Number two, we need to be moved with compassion. 
Because, you know, too many times it's like, oh, God, show me what you want me to do, and we want handwriting on the wall. But if you want to find God's plan for your life, you just need to walk in, in, in the compassion of Jesus, lift up your eyes, look on the fields. And I'll tell you what, just look, look, looking around you, instead of looking at your phone sometimes, will open the door for God's supernatural plan for your life. I remember one time we were in France, driving through the, the French countryside. We'd been preaching in a church there. This is my, my 28-year-old son was 10 months old at the time and uh, had to stop to get gas. And when I stopped to get gas, I found myself in the back of a line of about 20 gypsy men. And each one had several kids with them. It was just men and their boys, men and their boys. My flesh got a little bit frustrated because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to wait forever here to pay for the gas. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God has prompted me to look into their eyes. And what I saw was, was despair what I, and hopelessness and the compassion of Christ raised up inside of me. I didn't know what to do about it, so we just went home to the pastor's house, and, and I told my wife, I, I don't know, I have to go back. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I drove 15 minutes back, parked the car, started walking towards this, this gypsy camp in this big field, all these uh, 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 RVs in the field. And this young man came up to meet me and says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I don't know how else to say it except I saw, I saw some of you earlier and, and I'm a Christian. I just wanted you to let you know that, that God loves you and Jesus has a plan for your life. He looked at me kind of funny. He says, just wait right here. And so uh, he comes back with the chief. And the chief says, what are you doing? I told him the same thing. And he looks at me and he says, would, would you come back tomorrow and tell that to my people? I said, well, well, sure. And so... I went back the next afternoon, and they had 75 chairs set up and a, and a sound system erected, and we had an outdoor meeting, and, 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 and we gave this altar call. I preached on Ephesians 2.10, and especially the young people came forward first, and they were weeping, and they are giving their lives to Jesus. What I didn't know is back in the 60s and 70s, there was a great revival amongst the gypsies with T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne had gone and done these crusades, and much of, a lot of them had gotten saved. But this particular gypsy camp was in sin and out of fellowship with God and alcohol and all kinds of problems. And because uh, that's what those guys were doing at the gas station. Every, every man was buying a case of beer and his boy had a bar of chocolate. Beer and chocolate, that's all they were doing. And so there was a revival that broke out. And I'm st sitting there. I'm, in my, I'm 25 years old and I'm standing there. And how did this kid from St. Louis get in the middle of a gypsy field in a gypsy camp in France preaching in French to a bunch of gypsies? And I thought, man, this is the good life. Amen. But, but it was just the compassion. So be filled with the Spirit, be moved with compassion, and finally be quick to obey. Uh, the first miracle Jesus did is what his mother said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes it's just that simple. One day we were preaching at a ministers conference in Virginia years back, and I got up one morning, and no one was wearing ties. It's like I love the church here. It's, I love this. You know, I'm probably overdressed today. <laughs> and, so, and so I felt the Spirit of God prompt me to put on a tie. And my head says, I don't want to wear a tie. There's no need to wear a tie. Three times I had that prompting put on a tie. And so I did. And I'm not, I'm not a weird, flaky kind of guy. Okay, this doesn't happen every day. But that morning, when we were on the way to church, we had to stop at Walmart. And I get out at the Walmart uh, and go, I'm walking to my destination, which I don't remember what we needed. My wife needed something there. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice, sir, excuse me, excuse me. And I turn around, and here's this young man, again, 20-something. And he's standing there holding a tie. He says, could you please help me? And I said, well, I don't know. What do you need? He goes, well, I noticed you were wearing a tie. And my grandpa just died, and today's his funeral. And I don't know how to tie the tie. I was wondering if you could show me how to tie it. And I knew this was an Ephesians 2.10 moment. And so I said, sure. Showed him how to tie the tie, and he starts crying. He starts opening his heart about his grandpa, how much he's going to miss him and everything. Just able to share Jesus with him. And then he looks at me. He goes, could you do me another really big favor? And I said, I don't know. You got to be careful saying yes to that. <laughs> and he goes, would you be willing to come to my grandpa's funeral today? Well, well, sure. So I'm in a strange town in Bedford, Virginia, and I tell the pastor where we're at, and he goes, well, I'll take you there. We get there, and he's waiting on the parking lot outside. And he goes, you came. You really came. Come, I want to meet you to meet my family. So I said, great, we're going to meet a few family folks. But we walk in the door, and there's about 150 people in this big, jammed in this big room. And he goes, hey, everyone, I want you to meet my new friend. And I said, okay. <laughs> this is, and, and then he turns to me, and he says, would you tell them what you told me at Walmart about Jesus? Aww. And so I'm standing there in a, in a funeral parlor with a bunch of strangers in, in a strange town preaching the gospel. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is the good life. 
Well, how do you get to those, those kind of, how do you get to Africa? How do you get to, to, to the place that God has ordained for you? You're filled with the Spirit, you're moved with compassion, and you're quick to obey, even in the little things. Too many people say, oh, God, send me to China, send me to China. I want to encourage you with that today. That's a really short message. But it's one that will change your life. Amen. So Hallelujah. If we, could we stand just for a moment? I'd like to, to pray this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Father, I thank you in, for, for the plans, for the purposes for the good works which you've prepared beforehand for Beyond Church. Lord, I know that there are individuals here that are, that are seeking, they're desiring, they're hungering after a sense of purpose. They're wanting to know why they're here on the earth. They're wanting to know what it is that they're called to do. Father God, I just thank you that today you can speak to their hearts and show them that they don't have to see everything today. They don't have to know exactly what that picture is going to look like after all those dots are connected. But Father, they can take time to pray in the Holy Ghost. They can take time to lift up their eyes and look upon those who are around them right here in Arkansas. Be moved with compassion. And you can open doors of utterance and open doors for the witness of, of the gospel, the good news. And Father, when those doors are open and when there are gentle nudgings and promptings of the Spirit that they can simply choose to obey and watch you do the miracle. Watch you do the miracle. Hallelujah. You know, I don't, I don't like to ever minister anywhere without giving at least an opportunity. If there's somebody here in this place today that's never yet given their life to Jesus, I'm going to turn this over to, to Pastor Nate right after that. But is there anybody here this morning who'd say that, you know what, I'm, I'm listening to this, I'm hearing about the fact that God has a plan and a supernatural plan for my life, but the, the truth is I'm not even sure I know him, I'm not sure I'm, I, 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 that I'm right with him. If you were to die right now, today, and this was your last day on the earth, you're not sure 100% that you'd spend eternity with Jesus. I'm here to tell you that it's a free gift. You don't have to do anything to earn it. You just have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He is the Son of Man. That if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so I'm just going to count to three. And if there's anyone here that's never yet given their life to Jesus, I want you to just raise your hand and I'd, I'd love to pray to you this morning. Is there anyone today that says, you know what? I need to give my life to Jesus. I want to know Him. I want to find my purpose here on the earth and I know I can't find it unless I'm in Him. Is there anybody? One, two, three. Is there anybody this morning? Otherwise, let's all pray this together. Thank you, Father, that I'm your workmanship. I'm created in Jesus Christ for good works that you prepared beforehand that I should walk in them. I thank you, Father, that I will walk in those plans. I will be filled with the Spirit. I will pray out those mysteries. I will be moved with compassion as I lift up my eyes and look at those around me. And Lord, I decide that I will be quick to obey the promptings of your Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the lives that will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. How about, I mean, I don't know, I'll give you a hand, give you a, I don't know, a, woo! Yeah. Grab a chair really fast, come on. Grab a chair really quick, I'm going to close this morning um, by something I, I don't usually do, but I was impressed with the Lord about doing this. Um, even just how this relationship formed, uh, honestly, in my mind, and French, I'm like, French, I'm French, you know, like. Not, not, but yet the picture and the witness of the heart, I didn't even know how, even what this man did. I just knew the Lord said, there, there's something significant. Matter of fact, there's a key. Even like that nation that you saw, it's a key. And last night, just talking about how they're, they're, uh, they want him to come and, and, and there's a building, but it would need, you know, all, all these things. And, you know, I want you to put up this verse, and I, 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 I've... This verse came to my heart this morning, and the Lord said, I, I want you to, um, my, 
my mother and father-in-law, Kevin and Susan, they're also on the missions field. So I have family that says yes, and there they go, right? And what I found is that those that are going, they have a lot of questions. Not of what their purpose is, but of how can we accomplish it? How? 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 So they're willing to say yes. They're already going. They're jumping with two feet before the, everything's even there and everything's even aligned. But they, it says this, Romans, if you put it up, how then can they call on them? Who, there's this, this how. And you know what? If, if we're, I need to be a part of solving that, that question. Part of the how. Here, here's how. Right here. You know, here's, here's part of the how. Throw the net on the shoulder. How are we going to get this to the ocean? How are we going to get this? How are we? How, here's how. Right here. Me. I, I, I'm going to be a part of this how. How can they call on the one whom they've not believed in? And this is both here and, and there. And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard in? How can they hear without someone preaching? How? Go on to the next verse. And how can anyone preach unless they be sent? I'm going to be a part of that how. Like of the sending. Of the, well, you know, if they're willing... And they're, and they're going, and, and God's given them direction, and, and Lord knows I can't speak French. But there's a key to go into all the world and reach the gospel, or, or preach the gospel. I mean, I'm going to be a part of the how. And, um, and I, I just know the Lord just been, he, he's just talking about the name of this church and, and reaching beyond the four walls and beyond Alma, beyond, like, go, like bigger and purpose, because all these things have been going on. And... Um, and I just really believe that this is one of the people, and we haven't really hit on missions a lot, but the Lord's really been burning that and, and evangelism and getting back to some of those roots of, of, of inside, not one or the other, but the tension that should always be there, that we're reaching the lost, that we're discipling the found, that we're empowering the call. That's the work of the Spirit. And, um, and so uh, this is Brother Ken Taylor, and, and this is a, a, a beginning. Of, of, I believe, a significant uh, partnership um, that's actually started a couple of years ago. And, um, and, and, and it's just amazing how even now, how things are just like all of a sudden, like just Octo October falling into place. I believe it's God's timing um, that's just right on. And, and, and uh, you know what he, what he showed you is not like this presentation that's been put together for years this is all that's happening now. I, I mean, you can see that he looks the same in the pictures because this is what's happening. This is what they're doing. This is what's going on. And, um, and so I want to receive it, receive uh, a tithes and offering, or not tithes and offerings, but just an offering uh, to, to sow, and I, just uh, what I would say, uh, inaugural seed, you know, like into, into, this, into this work of bringing the gospel into the nations. You know, what we've been talking about in the last... Um, six weeks, we've been talking out of Ephesians chapter 4, how God gave some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists, um, some pastors, for the perfecting of the saints, right, so that they would be thoroughly equipped for their own works of ministry. This is why it's so important to say, come, come, teach Teach, the, teach these people more than just about Jesus, but about the name of Jesus and the power of the name of Jesus and, and healing and all these things because they're, they're, their people are dealing with voodoo and it's, it's very real. It's a spirit realm. Assignments, demons are, are angels that are fallen, that, that, are, that go at the mention of, of a word. Guess what? Angels go at the mention of his word. And, and, and so the power of God, it's, it's amazing. The, 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 the spirit realm is just as real in these nations as this code is to you right now. Maybe more real. He said last night, we, we were talking, he said, you know, um, a 38 special and a voodoo, a guy, that a voodoo priest, he said, I'm going to cur curse you. That's just as real. Why? Because both will kill you. Looking down the barrel of a 38 special or 9 millimeter and a voodoo priest cursing you, just as real. Why? Because both will kill you. And you're saying, well, but not with the power of the name of Jesus. The name above every name. And the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, signs, wonders, miracles, like what you what you read about in the Bible. Listen, it's not just to be, we just have to be exposed to say, you know what, this is, and it's got to become a reality to us. 
And I just even believe just all that God's doing is just, it's very significant. So if you're giving, you can, we're going to pass the buckets one more time, but also you can give online to Ken Taylor. Um, we're going to also sow an honorarium um, in, into him, but anything uh, over and above. And then, um, so you can go ahead and come on forward, guys. And then uh, I want to, as we close this morning, check out, um, check out the table. You know, there's something, if the Lord's saying, be a part of, of sowing and becoming a partner in that partnership. And I don't know how clear, clear it was that they're, they're looking for partners, $180 a year. Is that what it is? Whatever you want. I know I got that. But, but that's like, I mean, you're saying a certain amount a month or something, $15 a month. That, that, that's a challenge. I mean, but maybe what the Lord would ask you, I'm just saying, let's be a part of, um, let's, let's be a part of the how. Amen. Let's be a part of the dot, whatever the Lord would ask you to do. And um, let's just pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. We come to you this morning. And we thank you for the beautiful feet that you brought to us today. It was just a message that opened our hearts, that expanded and, and, and brought purpose. Thank you for the words that were, um, were spoken. But Father, I just, we just come together in agreement right now for the plans, the hows all the answers, all the steps for the fulfillment of your plans. And we just say thank you for allowing us to be a part, that you would you would say, hey, do, do, do you want to come? Do you want to play a part? Thank you for that, Lord. And we give you honor. We call this seed blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. still being passed, but I wanted to um, make mention of something today as you as you guys are going. Uh, see, he mentioned T.L. Osborne, right? I thought this was really interesting. I don't know if anybody, if you know, you can always look it up, uh, Missionary to Africa. Um, we're fixing to go after after church here. Um, one of the first things that we, where we really connected is the Lord said, get this guy a bow, right? So we got him a bow, like a, a nice bow and a fishing rod, and, and just said, "Hey, thank you for being faithful for for chasing, you know, hunting's chasing, you know, but for chasing the people that you're so near to God's heart, and just you know, just wanted to bless them." And and um, and I just said, "Hey, you need to come, come hunting, you know, come, you know." So I threw this invitation out for a little while, and he said, "All right, you know, I'll be, in, I could be in town because I got to be in at Rama." over in Tulsa, you know, at this time, and we can maybe make it work. And it's like, yes, please, because also missions is so in our heart. And, um, but where we're going, uh, the guy that I hunt with, my good friend, a good friend, Travis, uh, his his uncle, or great uncle, is uh, T.L. Osborne. And um, so Grandma Frankie, um, and the grandma, this is her sister, or his sister. Uh, so this is the kin, the, the prayer warriors. I mean, in a small town, uh, Oklahoma, out in the middle of nowhere, they have a Sonic. Um, no cell phone reception, but they have, and that's where we're going. And I just, I just think God is so amazing, significant. God does use the foolish things to confound the wise. Even what you're seeing, and I, and I know I'm taking this last minute, is this: what you're seeing with the people of Haiti to go unlock the key to uh, the key. Like God, God is like you look at that, you go, or how about this? A people, right? Even just with 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 Kanye West, I love the, the and that these the 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 just the the nation. The nation, the because it's ethnicity that you see it, it, of places of influence. Our sports teams are predominantly of that ethnicity or that nation, and and of, you, of black people that that are so talented, so so gifted, so all these things. Yet 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 it was an oppressed people that God is even right now. You're seeing this influence. Jesus is King, putting pouring out. It's like wow, who would have thought that that? I mean, it's just so cool. Like God is up to things. And, and I think we just got to get, 
a little bit more radical and say, you know what, God is bigger than my box, right? And, and I'd be willing to, like, to, to again, pray in the spirit just and, and listen to your the promptings of your heart and then and be quick to obey, even if it's not the same box that you're used to because God's blowing the boxes off, right? There's a high water mark. There's high water marks. Like, in other words, a 100-year floodplain. How many know what I'm talking about? And you have a big rain, and you go, wow, it's never gotten this high before. Well, guess what? The Bible says in the last days, the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. So there's high water marks. There's water that, has, in other words, there's things that water hasn't got there before. There's things that God's going to do that it hasn't touched there before. It hasn't done that that way or that how. And so just be, be key to, to check here, right, and, and, and eliminate some of this so that you can be a part of what God is doing, right? Instead of on the outside looking in, man, you get to go swim in the deep. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday and grab those kids. Love you all. Oh, one last thing. Fall family nights tonight.